but you never know. Speaking of never knowing, are we ready to begin? Yes. I believe so, yeah. Hey, kitty girls. Once again, we're doing it here at Cubs Out Loud. Welcome to Drag Race Tea Time. This is our recap show where we spill all the tea. And we're talking about season three, All Stars, episode number four. Otherwise known by me as the fucking roller coaster episode of the season. I'm just going to say that for the record. Uh, but before we get into things, I'm super excited because we have an extra special guest host with us. Everybody say hi to Noah. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's awesome. So uh, Damon is out doing some sleuthing to determine whether or not milk got spoiled. So uh, we're going to be talking about the latest episode of the show. Chester and I happen to be in Lexington, Kentucky at North American Bear Weekend where there was even uh, drama about trying to watch the show because the hotel didn't have VH1, so people were trying to watch it in their rooms, stream it on devices, there were viewing parties. Well, and then I they was were surprised at how show. many viewing parties it happened. <laughs> um, I, I'm, not a, I'm not entirely sure how it happened, but um, I was having dinner in the restaurant... And uh, I had looked up, and I was like, oh, Drag Race is playing on the TV. So I don't know if somebody, like, plugged their laptop into it, or maybe they had, like, a, a Chromecast or something. I don't know, but it was playing. So while it wasn't exactly spoiled for me, like, I, I was watching it, but I couldn't really tell what was going on. But I did see who went went home okay uh and then you've watched it since then yes okay i'm gonna let me get that out of the way we've all seen the episode correct <laughs> yes yes <laughs> it'd be a little awkward to have a show and be like well, we only saw about 25 percent of it <laughs> <laughs> i just pipe up 20 minutes in um what's a drag queen just to keep saying that term and i don't really know what does that mean Who's milk? <laughs> oh, like the drink. Oh, like the... Yeah. Speaking of such things, let's jump into this. So um, we're going to get into thoughts on the episode here in a second. Hang on. Maybe. Come down. Put the bass in your wall. All right, so this part of the show, and Noah, you're familiar with this, but in case you're new to uh, what we do, this is when we talk about the show overall, uh, anything specific that stood out of us. So this particular episode is called All Star Snatch Game, which means all of these queens have already been on previous seasons, and all but one had done Snatch Game before. Sorry. One never had Snatch Game in their season, and one... Or two. Wasn't there for Snatch Game. Right. Right. One was not there for Snatch Game. So, uh, Noah, since you're our extra special guest uh, host with us, why don't you start off on your thoughts on the episode? Sure. Thank you so much. Um, well, I am a huge fan of Snatch Game. Just I really do think it's very true when they say it really separates sort of the top of the group from the bottoms. Um, it's just so interesting to see as time goes on that people sort of have to be more creative in terms of who they pick. That when you've done the shares of the world, that when you've done the Britney Spears is, I don't know the plural of Britney Spears, uh, of the world, that you sort of have to dig deeper and be like, okay, who can I even do? And you see really creative options. So it's been really interesting to see that. Um, one of the things I will say is that I'm still deeply confused as to why Mark Jacobs was there. It seems uh, <laughs> like an interesting choice. And just because it seems like for something like this, there'd be so many better options. The one that comes to mind is I know Kate McKinnon from SNL is a huge Drag Race fan. So you think that's a person who, you know, is a queer identified person, but also a brilliant impressionist and loves Drag Race. So I don't know. Uh, other than that, 
I am just very, very happy to see Snatch Game back. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into all of the uh, bit by bit who everyone did. I have a feeling Mark Jacobs is there just because he is a gay... I hate he's to a... use the word icon because I don't exactly think he's an icon, but he is representative of gay culture. <laughs> so, and well, Santino Rice was on there forever, and he's a clothing designer. So, I guess I just don't understand why wouldn't you hang on to him for a day or two? Because it sounds like the next challenge is going to be the fashion in which they design right? outfits. Like, right? Everybody's schedule got a little bit lopsided, I suppose. Maybe they were expecting milk to make it this far. Oh well. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Milk of Mark Jacobs by Mark Jacobs. <laughs> Did either of you see John Pauly's Extra Lap recap on YouTube? No, I that no, one. no, no. Oh, God. He does one for every episode, and it posts within 60 seconds of the end of each week's episode, which is so crazy to me. But he mentions Mark Jacobs, you know, comes into the workroom, and John Pauly says, Mark Jacobs is probably like, where's Milk? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, shady, shady. <laughs> um, I think, Noah, to your point about Mark Jacobs being there, the shitty, bitchy side of me immediately says, well, he blew someone. But the reality is in the RuPaul uh, alumni family, a fair amount of queens have actually done uh, runway, been models for him. I think both in... New York and LA, or at least in LA. So I think that's where that comes from a little bit, but maybe not. Uh, I don't know. It's very difficult to say. I, I agree. Sometimes they have a guest on and you're like, uh, hmm? I mean, heck, we had Lucy Kudrow for what, like four minutes, whatever that was about once. That was a weird thing <laughs> having Lisa Kudrow on there, too. I'm fine with that. I will take any and all Lisa Kudrow I can. I want her to show up for three minutes in every show I watch. Oh, I love Lisa Kudrow. I think she's a fantastic comedian when she plays on TV. I just, just the way that she was there was kind of like, oh my gosh, somebody go get a celebrity. So we have somebody in the room. And that was, you know, the person that they could find to do it. <laughs> It's not like they could just pull anybody off of, you know, Hollywood Boulevard. They kind of have to find somebody. <laughs> well, I guess that was my thinking with this challenge specifically of, like, really, you couldn't find any improv comedy or impressionist people in Los Angeles, no less? Well, that's really a good point, Noah. I hadn't thought about that the judges should match to whatever the thing is that they're doing in the competition. I guess they try to do that, but you're really pointing out an excellent thing that like all right so Kristen Chenoweth is the celebrity quote unquote guest judge which <sighs> okay i have to bring this up cuz it's not actually at my point um she's actually a celebrity on snatch game this is a first <laughs> in all the seasons right that a celebrity actually is a celebrity on snatch game doing themselves yes yes I was greatly confused. Agreed. Yes. Uh, she had a really good line when she did her introduction. She thought, I thought sometime one of these queens would do me. And then Bendela <laughs> delivers an excellent comeback. So, yeah, I, um, I was a little confused by what she was on there. Not as much as the other guest, though. Nicole Byer? The, uh, the RuPaul superfan or something? I'm lost. On on what? I'm, I'm lost on the superfan. Yeah. Bit. I don't know who she is. Never heard of her. Oh. Yeah, well, neither, neither have I. Well, she has... Um, she has a show. I actually have seen an episode or two that she's funny. It just absolutely is a person like, oh, you're also a human who does things, question mark. So it always seems like there's one of those. It always seems like, oh, 
interesting semi-famous person, and then you're also along for the ride, other human. Nice. Um, Chester, what did you think of the episode? What were your thoughts? Um, we're kind of already covering it. To me, Snatch Game was weird. The whole episode had weirdness about it. From Kristen Chenoweth being on Snatch Game, I thought was odd. Um, and I know that uh, the queens who were competing didn't do as well as I expected them to which we'll get into later, particularly one in individual who is funny as fucking hell any other time, except for this time it was just bad all around, and I feel so bad for her. Yeah. Um, so I also was thrown off by Carson and Michelle being the contestants. Like the right, the, I was gonna say the same. Yeah, the non-celebrity game players. Right. I didn't understand that part. It would have made more sense if they always did that. But um, this is the first time I think, or something like, or close to this. I was like, you, you mean having Karsten and Michelle be the contestants all the time, or the judges? Uh, right, the contestants be the judges. Correct. Because then it makes more sense because the judging is not everything we see. Like, they see the whole production, not just the whatever they get shown on video. Well, who was it last All-Stars? Wasn't it um, Juju B and Raven? Uh, well, I don't know about last all-stars i i don't remember all of the judges when they did it but yes jujubee and raven were contestants but did not judge right okay so yeah that was just that was kind of that was another weirdness to me um so yeah now i will say this rue knows how to make ugly uglier and that's not a positive i mean when the joke doesn't land <laughs> or you're doing a bad job, Rue just lets that like shit hit the floor and splatter and make a scent and does nothing with it. Like she doesn't really try to save your ass. She's just like, <laughs> which I, I find kind of interesting that she's like, mm, yeah, that's a stinker. I mean, she doesn't say that, but she just lets it, it just, just sort of throwing oil on the fire there was one in particular where i remember um and i know this is going to be the person we get into most i'm sure but when trixie made the joke responding to ben of saying your joke was an anana miss which that's okay like you've made the joke and it's a pun and it does work and rue was just like yes she did say the word anonymous like you're making an okay joke into as if it was like a complete flop Right. Um, so it was like, it wasn't even not giving a life preserver. It was like taking Trixie's head and dunking her in the water and be like, no, no, you're just done. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's interesting. You say that because was it BB that said, uh, Oh no, 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 no. Like, like you are playing with fire. You do there. If there's anybody you do not impersonate, it's RuPaul. But I think Milk's impression of RuPaul in her season was Snatch Game. Was it her? Um, well, she did for the well. They all did for the runway, but Jessica Wilde on season two oh. did RuPaul. Okay. Uh, Milk. Yeah, I was gonna say Milk did it on the runway. Who but... was it that did it? And in... was it only Jessica that did it in Snatch Game? <laughs> Thing, I think so. Might have been one I, I don't know. It, it it's one of those things that basically, I think the comment was to camera was basically like that's taboo. Like girl, no. Like you don't ever think you can get away with it. I think in this circumstance, Trixie proved true, and Shangela had the best comment on it, 
which was super shitty. That she <laughs> said it, and they which put she, it in the show. Which she broke the fourth wall, went right into the camera, and you put made her into that. <laughs> <laughs> I blame you personally. Yeah, she was like, all of you on the internet said she was funny. I blame you. And I was just like, <gasps> I was like, oh. Oh, she just came for everybody. It was like, you're the reason why she did it. I think <laughs> Trixie learned, don't believe your own bullshit. Like, don't leave, don't believe your own hype about that kind of a thing. Like, yes, well, she, it can be funny, but it's usually probably in just like a one line dose. Mm. And it's not necessarily a gut punch kind of laugh. It's like, well, some people find it funny. Mm. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen her do it live in front of a crowd to know whether or not it really works. And now I'm thinking she probably is just going to stop doing it. Because of I mean, she, Oh, go for it. I was going to say, she does it all the time on that um, web show, the one with Katya. And then now on the vice land show, which is sort of, I think where the bulk of it is. Do either of you watch? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, but it was also interesting because someone made a compilation of all the impressions of either other RuPaul queens or other celebrities in general that she's done over the course of even just that web show. So it's like you had all these options to choose from. It's not like this was the only thing you could have done. And then just nope. Yeah, I think you have a good point, Noah, that she had things that she could do. What I thought was the most damning was I think Michelle Vassage says, we want Trixie back. And I was like, wow, that was pretty cutting. Like that was to say, girl, you lost your way. You went somewhere. We don't know where you are, but you need to come back. And I was like, she made a bad choice with an impersonation. I don't think she completely fucking disappeared. Right. Like, her runway to me was Trixie. It was... Trixie stepping out of a box in a way because even I was like, ooh, that, that, that's a lot of look. <laughs> but I didn't dislike it. I just, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. Um, so I, I don't know. I was just really kind of surprised by that. But not that I want to blame the edit, but that could have been a piece of it, you know, that we didn't see the whole exchange between her and judges. Um, I will say that it was ripping me apart, though, watching her break down and be upset and then say in confessional how upset she was because she felt like she was telling this horrible secret about herself that she may have a good, like, attitude and outward face. But the reality is, is that she felt she was crumbling, like she just wasn't bringing all of it and that she was constantly becoming scared, which I was like. Well, that's shitty and also could spell your demise. Which makes me very nervous because ever since they announced the season and then I found out Trixie was on it, I was like, I am in Camp Trixie. I want that bitch to win. I think it would be great. And like I've said, like, she was fine while she was safe. And then she kind of wasn't doing so hot. And then now it's just... It's not good. And this is this is the point where I'm like, like, I hope you start winning. <laughs> or, or the <laughs> now is the time to do the thing. Yeah. To say the least. For me, uh, thoughts on the episode. The drama is real. Um, it may be manufactured for television. I think that's been the big comment online that Shangela is working like cinematic drama on purpose um, and kind of not so much manufacturing shit, but knew how it would play out. And like, so we were at the hotel, Damon was going to watch it. Um, I told him like, I took my Apple TV. I took my MacBook. I mean, I had all my shit and I got the Apple TV to work, but trying to mirror from the MacBook to the Apple TV, it caused a little buffering. It was a problem. So we just sat on my bed and watched it on my MacBook. And in between on commercial breaks, uh, Damon and I were talking right then and there about like what we thought was going on. And we kind of predicted a little bit towards the outcome 
not exactly how it went down, but the one thing we absolutely said was if Shangela ends up top two, she's going to pick Trixie if she wins the lip sync for your legacy and all hell's going to break loose. Um, and then when she did go to top two and it's her and Ben, like it was funny, funny now, but like I was, my stomach was in knots. I was not happy about this entire episode, the way it was playing out. It was definitely manufactured to play to the drama about Trixie and her feelings and what was going on and how things mm -hmm. played out. And she made a horrible choice and Shangela being mad at her. And we're still like on this fucking Kennedy kick about, oh, but if we're a sisterhood, like that shit don't fly. And I'm like, really? So if you're family, you're not always gonna get along with everybody. Let's talk about that for a moment. Mm. <laughs> so that, 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 that's where I was like, the drama is real in this reality show kind of mm. uh, concept of what we're dealing with here. So um, yeah, that that was overall, I kind of felt like an, an overarching kind of thing in that case. I really like, um, as the early episode drama between Shangela and Trixie is happening, what with the, the note, the note, um, as that's starting to unfold, you just see Aja turn away with a big smile like, oh boy, here we go. That's my kind of girl. I, ugh. All season long, Aja's like, I'm so glad I'm not part of whatever fuckery this is. <laughs> I was shocked they caught that. Like, it, it, it makes sense they caught it. She was right in the camera angle. But I was like, even Ajo was kind of playing for the camera a little bit. Like, she knew she might be, you know, getting caught in that shot where she was like, you know. And then, of course, Chi-Chi has to be like, ooh, face, crack. And then she has that great line. She's like, you know, you could tell Trixie's, you know, uh, stomach just fell out of her ass. And I was like, oh, damn. Like, they are just all basically being like, bitch, you caught? Like, that's all there is to it. There's there's no getting around it. You're just done. You're just done. I like um, during there was a drag con panel where it was Aja being interviewed by Johnny McGovern. And Aja, and this is my favorite thing she's ever said. She goes, you know, I, of course, you know, we want to have peace. And we want to have friendship. But you know what's better than peace? Some drama. And I just think that is like maybe the theme of the episode here a little bit. Well, I will fully admit. This show would be boring as shit if it was all kumbaya and everybody loved each other and there was like no issues and everybody was very supportive. So I think the production company full well knows All Stars 3 could not be All Stars 2 because the, you know, and it couldn't be, you know, some of these seasons where everybody just is so happy to get along. Like, because in 2, Nothing significant happened until Alaska waked out like and had the biggest temper tantrum ever and has talked very publicly about it since then and has said recently in a, a video that was shot, she was like, she was asked about it. She's like, oh, no, that temper tantrum went on forever, like an hour and a half or something. Like she just carried on and carried on and carried on. And what I found interesting is she said, I was getting it out of my system. Knowing full well that it was going to camera, not sure what was going to happen. Which I was like, okay. Like, not everyone wants to be that bold, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Chester, are you going to say something? Um, I was just going to say that I think there was a little bit of um, drama just slightly before that between uh, Fifi and um, Alyssa Edwards. Well, yeah, but for the most part, everybody was nice, except for when Alyssa and Fifi got into it for those two episodes. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I think that's what they feel they have to show. And I get it because they want ratings and they want to sell merch and, you know. Everybody's invested. It's an industry now. So, yeah. Um, anything else in regards to thoughts on the episode before we move on? I think I'm all set. 
Yeah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> the time has come to lip sync for your legacy. Good luck and don't fuck it up. All right, so snaps and eye rolls as Mama Ru says, don't fuck it up. But somebody does. <laughs> they always fuck it up. That's what it comes down to. So, <sighs> Noah, what are your snaps and your eye rolls from this episode? What are my snaps and eye rolls? Oh, you don't want me to do a, a rousing rendition of I Kissed a Girl real quick? That's not what you want me to Is that not this segment of the show? Um, <laughs> my snaps for the week uh a hundred percent. And I already talked about her a little bit. Aja, I mean, has just this season completely blown me out of the water. Um, so being based in New York, when her season's cast was announced, she had a show in New York that night. So I went to go see her the night that that was announced. And she, to this day, is one of the three, I would say best live performances I've ever seen from a drag race person that was doing flips and like spins in the air into splits onto concrete um so it's just really nice to see that she's being recognized the way I, that people are seeing the aja i know is there um specific to this episode just to see her do crystal abasia having watched that documentary a while back i was just watching just my jaw drop like i would watch a full biopic of this. I want just her as Crystal being mad at just everyone. Just an hour and a half of that. And I thought her runway was really great too. That is nice to see this sort of Easter egg color palette that she has, um, which maybe sounds like a read, but I, I swear isn't. Uh, so I'm just, I'm really impressed with her. I am very happy that especially as someone who everyone sort of gave a side eye of why is she here? Why is this a thing that she's actively proving them wrong? That's my snaps. Yeah. I, I fully support that Aja was the one everybody was like, who this bitch? Like, <laughs> cause even I think Kennedy or somebody was like, did she not just like, just leave? And now she comes walking right back in basically. Um, now, I have heard there's a podcast I listen to um, called Grizzly Kiki. Uh, Grizzly Kiki is uh, drag queens that actually uh, are very involved in the drag community and have had a lot of uh, Rue girls on and stuff. And they're doing recaps right now. Interestingly, they are friends with Aja. And the Aja jumping off the box thing, she does that on the regular. So they knew what she was going to do when they watched the episode. So they were, she up from there. yeah, they were amused by that. Like comment. Cause they were like, Oh, these bitches don't know Aja. Like we know Aja. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I just worry so much about her bones. I'm just so scared for her in terms of like her body and her, like, I, I can't even, I can barely get out of my bed in the morning, let alone plop myself down off of a box into a split. Well, um, maybe she just takes lots of vitamins, you know? I mean, for that kind of a thing, she probably uh, gets lots of calcium and lots of vitamin D. So, you know. Just a single Flintstones vitamin. That's all you need. Just start the day right. Yeah. Uh, what about your eye rolls, Noah? What about my eye rolls? So I wrote for my eye rolls. Now I feel like the time has come. Uh, Trixie, I... I would say I'm disappointed, but you know who's more disappointed in Trixie than me? Trixie. Trixie. <laughs> yeah, I, it was almost sad to see, just of like, because clearly, like you're saying, this episode is framed around um, this drama involving Trixie, and oh, but this is her time to really knock it out of the park, and she even said, like, this is my challenge. I've got this. This is the thing that I do. And so for that to not work out and to really see this really intense, vulnerable moment from her was frankly upsetting. Um, like, this isn't even a fun eye roll of like, oh, can you believe what she did? This is like, are you OK? Like, are you you good, Trixie? So, yeah, no, I agree with you that I think I think your point of view, Doa, is 
I give her eye rolls because it's so disappointing what she did. Yes. Not that she tried. Not that, you know, she... I don't even know what it is. Like, that she wasn't cut out for it. That's not it at all. It's just you failed. That's it, that's the weirdness. It feels like that moment in um, that famous America's Next Top Model clip of, I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. And that that thing of, well, I, I wanted you to do so well. Like, in the Fantasy League, of course, I've had her in my... Um, top three for this week. I was like, oh, she's going to be brilliant. Whatever she does, it's going to be stellar. And then, nope, not as much. Yeah. Um, it's interesting uh, that you say that because I, as much as I know, I think it's only her and BB that had never done Snatch Game, I think. Um, well, and Kristen. <laughs> celebrity <laughs> guest celebrity or whatever. Um <laughs> And I think that goes to show how, like, fucked up it is and critical. If you've never done it before, how much behind the ball you are. Mm. Where if you've already had that experience, you you know what it takes to try to be successful. But even then, people fuck it up. <laughs> you know, like, that's the part that kind of surprised me that critically only two people understood what snatch game is i mm. think and that's the part that really bothered me the most was uh two people embodied the character and knew how to get the mannerisms right but to improv it because that's what snatch game is about and others i think were just doing like lines and that's part of where the problem was. Like, I think that's where Michelle gave the, the feedback of it was one note. And mm. I think that was to Aja about Crystal LaBeja. Like, well, yes, this is great. And you really kind of personified her. The downside is you weren't really giving us anything original. It was all stuff that had been said before. You were just kind of placing it uh, in there. And I get that because that doesn't necessarily fly. You know, you got to do a little bit uh, more with that. And that's where I think some, you know, kind of mm. did better. So that being said, Jester, what about your snaps and eye rolls? Uh, well, my snaps is going to reveal who, um, well, no, it's going to say it's going to reveal who did not go home. <laughs> <laughs> my snaps were for Shangela and saving Trixie in the manner that she did. Because I thought for sure, after what what went down at the beginning of the episode and how badly Trixie did during the Snatch Game, I thought for sure she was going to go home. Now, in the document that we work with, that's not what I thought you meant. Because you put Shangela save. I thought you meant about how Shangela saved her own ass because in the workroom she was going to do Miss Cleo the telephone psychic and then immediately cl Rue clocks her for an Irish accent. And right. it's like, that's not Jamaican. And then Shangela's was like, what? Uh, and that cracked me up to the way. Cause I was like, every time she tried it, I was like, no girl, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Take the hint. And, and so she did. And she did Jennifer Lewis who, Shangela in real life is very good friends with and and Jennifer Lewis was recently on the what's the tea podcast with her with Rue and Michelle Visage and they talked about how Jennifer is friends with Shangela so I thought who the who the hell else can you personify but somebody that you actually know in real life and hang out with like right. then you know their mannerisms and stuff it's it's funny because uh when when I got home Last night, or well, after our podcast uh, last night, I sat down with Evan and we watched the episode. And I'm like, oh, man, why didn't Trixie do Katya? Mm -hmm. She knows her so well. She could have easily pulled off Katya. One of the things I had in mind for this season, or even in terms of like, not necessarily, not necessarily someone in your world that you know well. 
but just in terms of people who have been very visible this past year, I'm surprised that nobody went political. Like that, for instance, Trixie could have done a Kellyanne Conway even. That feels like it kind of writes itself of like, take the opportunity to spoof and knock down a peg. Especially as like, that's something unique to this past year. Right. That's true. Yeah. To be honest, I couldn't come up with anybody immediately that I thought Trixie could pull off. Like, I'm still kind of struggling on it. The only one I thought of, which we sort of talked about, I think, on the episode, that was going to be a problem, was going to be Dolly Parton. Because she already was Dolly Parton in the review. The, mm. you know. Right. Why didn't she go with a country star? She could have went as Shania Twain and, and easily <sighs> pulled that off. I would have been all about that. I I think she could have maybe gone Barbara Mandrell. Um, I mean, any of the classic country queens, I think she could have tried at. But... She could have pulled somebody from Hee Haw. Not that I remember any of the people that were on Hee Haw, but... True. I mean, it is interesting. Snatch Game is so tricky because you have to pick someone that works and Bendela doing Paul Lind I was like I'm like that's that's so dicey because you end up having to have a historical lesson for you know the kids in the audience who have no fucking clue who right. these older people are but, but look at how many other people who have chosen somebody that is not exactly current in pop culture unless you're gay and even then you really have to stretch. Like, uh... When, Little Edie. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, Little Edie. Nobody knew who the fuck Little Edie was unless you were familiar with those films or whatever. But for the most part, nobody knows who the hell that is. Well, or, um... Yeah. Who else was done that, um... When Alaska did... May West? May West. And when, uh... Oh, shit. Or am I blanking? Um, it'll come to me. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> no, I'm I do this all the time. Where I've got thoughts and they, they escape me. I'm still stuck on the Shania Twain idea. I just picture Trixie turning around and then going, let's go, girls. But it's just that for every answer. That that's the only thing right. she needs for every single question. Mm. That's it. That's the full impression. Yeah, I mean, Snatch Game is about fully em embodying and personifying this thing and not just being sound bites. Mm -hmm. And that's the criticism that some of the other queens had was, you know, especially Shangela was like, Trixie is just, you know, given RuPaul-isms. And I agreed that the very first thing she did with the album plug was funny. That was funny. That was perfect mm -hmm. to open it up. But then she just couldn't stick with it and by the way i was thinking when sasha did uh marlene dietrich um oh. i'm not i don't remember exactly when rupaul had said it but at some during some or a show of snatch game in one of the seasons she even said most people don't know who this is and you've basically you've embodied them so well that you don't need to know who they are because now they do. They know what kind of character this is. Mm. Uh, what's her face doing, Liza Minnelli? Right. Well, you know, when you bring up a good point, I don't. It's relevant. In, in my opinion, it needs to be somewhat relevant to the audience. But the reality is, in the competition, you only need to be relevant to the judges. Mm. Right. If Rue knows who and the fuck you are, <laughs> and Michelle and them, you're in. Like, so I'm still kind of. Oh, go for it. No, like Charles Nelson Riley, uh, Rip, Rip Taylor, Rip Torn. I can't remember which is Rip which. Taylor. <laughs> but Rip you know what I mean, like. Rip Torn is the guy with the mustache. Well, then he's the one that always threw <laughs> the confetti, though, right? Yes. That had the curly wig and the ascot, and was like, yeah. Um, yeah, so, but, but those are older gay characters that people would not necessarily know. 
Um, <gasps> what if Trixie did Varla Jean? I love Varla Jean Merman so much. That would be twisted. <laughs> to do a, a well-known drag queen that's never been on the show. <laughs> um, or someone doing Coco Peru. Ooh, that would be fun. I'm still surprised that nobody at this point, or maybe it's just like, you don't dare attempt this. I'm surprised that nobody's ever tried a Judy Garland. I just think that there's so much material there, and that is such a touchstone of... I mean, talk about queer icon. Like, what? Are you thinking I of... The... No, I was just going to say, I know a certain bear who could do Judy Garland. <laughs> maybe not the voice. Certainly not the voice. Yeah, I mean... And I think that's part of the issue is that maybe sometimes people feel, feel a little boxed in if they can't pull off the look, let alone the voice or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, Chester, what are your uh, eye rolls? Um, I really, really disliked RuPaul's look, her runway look. Um, for the most part, it was okay, but compared to the stuff she normally look, wears, it looked kind of cheap. And whatever the fuck that green thing was in the middle, how it, like, you know, came up around her boobs, and then there was this green thing in the middle, which I think was a stem for a flower, it just looked off. And her wig looked horrible. Like, you could see the line. Mm. Like, um, the first time I watched the episode, it was just on my phone. I didn't notice it, but then I watched it on my television last night, and I'm like, her wig looks really bad. You're seeing this, right? And Evan's like, yeah, it's it, it's got a line to it. So, Chester, your iTunes subscription, is it high def or standard definition? I imagine it's high def. Okay, because my iTunes subscription is standard definition, and I didn't necessarily catch that. So I'm wondering if that's the problem that some of the queens are bitching about with HD cameras now is like, this is not a backstage in a bar, you know what yeah. I mean? Or oh. in a theater with theater lighting. This is in a studio with bright motherfucking lights and you're like, you have to paint differently. And then you've got the cameras, which some of the older queens that come back have kind of commented on. Mm. Like, Well, I do know that my, my television doesn't do that fake where, where everything looks like it's been filmed on the set of like a uh daytime soap opera mm -hmm. i hate whatever that look is from tvs nowadays like you know in the past couple years tvs now look like that i can't stand that so thankfully my tv doesn't do that yeah and part yeah. of that i think is the amount of frames per second or something um yeah capture noah you were gonna say something no, yeah, just that's part of keeping the magic alive. It's like, I don't need anybody to see any of this in high def. The less definition available. Um, and then in the back of my head was a, a Trixie-style RuPaulism for RuPaul's outfit. Like, in the flower challenge, your look was pushing daisies. <laughs> You're safe. Yeah, well, I will say this. Trixie's dress was good for mm. her RuPaul look. She she took one of the iconic, you know, black evening gown with the, the red uh, flowers on it. I was like, oh, that, that looked, you know, I got it. The only thing that surprised me was that she did white RuPaul. And I know this could really backlash in some ways, but I'm surprised she didn't try to change her skin tone and, and her makeup. That's the only thing that surprised me was that she didn't try to be tan. She decided to go with her natural skin and just do RuPaul, but as Caucasian, which I was like, oh, okay, interesting. <laughs> Perhaps for the best. Perhaps for the... Uh... True. Very true. 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 Uh, my snaps and eye rolls, it is no surprise, my snaps go to Ben de la Creme. Uh, fourth time winner, who now I'm very concerned, because while I would like to see... Trixie win. I think Bendel is the, you know, the horse to beat um, in this race. And that's unfortunate for her because that's putting a bigger target on her back. The moment she is not 
if she ever ends up in bottom two, she's screwed. Or bottom three. Because I see immediately no fucks given. Bye, girl. Like, they're just going to be like, this whole, your cumulative performance, like, will be taken into account. I'm like, no, I think they're going to be like, you're a threat and you're gone. Like, and that's just how simple this is. Do you wonder if her, like, roller coaster click, click, click analogy was foreshadowing? I thought it was the episode she said it. I was like, oh, you fuckers. Because I was like, great, now she's probably going to go home. Like, and that's why we said that or did that. It, I, I have noticed that you can um, tell. You, I mean, you it's so subtle. But if you watch an episode enough times and you know exactly what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And if you're really paying attention to people's like facial expressions or the tone in their voice when they're doing their confessionals, you can tell that, oh, it's clever editing. They're foreshadowing because that's going to happen later on. It's that thing of but, like, well, what could go wrong? And then cut to, oh, everything know. going wrong. <laughs> yeah. You, you've really got to look for it, though, because it's incredibly subtle. Speaking of things that go wrong. My eye rolls are for Chi Chi. Again, no oh. surprise. The worst introduction in Snatch Game history, RuPaul points out that you can't even spell your impersonation name right. And Chi Chi didn't stay in character. She completely dropped trying to be Maya Angelou and was like, oh, really? And I was like, oh, God, of course they put that in instead of cutting it out. I was like, oh. It's just painful. Yeah. Um, oh, there, I think that's a lesson to any queen that's ever going to be on the show. Never choose someone you don't know. Like, I think I also agree a little bit. Carson was like an older Maya probably would have been better in later age that people would be a little bit more familiar with. And like, you could have made it funny. You just didn't. Like, you... You, you pick somebody that you thought you could do affectation, but that's not going to carry you. That's not funny. So. It, it just comes down to uh, the fact that we are now, what, um, 9, 10, 11? This is the, no, first season didn't have one. So 11 seasons of this, of Snatch Game. You know the game. You should be better at it. You should know that it takes more than a look to pull it off. You have to know that character. You have to know their mannerisms, the way they talk. You have to land jokes, something that they would say. So it, it takes more than just looking like the person in order to survive a snatch game. Yeah. No, I, I fully agree. If you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't do it. It's that simple. And that's why I, I wanted to give snaps to Ben de Creme because she did really great with Paul Lynn. I think she did the best out of all of them in impersonation. That said, she relied a little too much, in my opinion, on certain things that Paul Lynn did, but he didn't do it all the fucking time. So that, to me, was a little bothersome that it seemed like she kept doing the same tricks just with different words. And I was like, mm, that's not 100% accurate. I don't know if you guys saw, they actually released videos of them in interview in character. I did oh, see no, that. I yes. didn't see that. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, I think at vh1.com is where you can see these like one minute interview clips with all of the queens except Kristen in character answering the question answering like two or three questions and the one primary one is like what is it what is the best snatch or something like that and they're all doing it in character and i was like wow that's really up in game because you're not just playing the game in character like you're expected to be that character period <laughs> so and when it got to the one for chi chi and then it got to the, the last one in the series in the order they were in when i saw them trixie was last and i was like oh god i don't even know if i want to watch <laughs> i was just so <laughs> freaked out because i was like this is probably gonna be horrible it's gonna be a train wreck but it, it was okay it wasn't bad 
That being said, uh, are we ready to move on into closing thoughts? Just before we do, because now that you said earlier on Charles Nelson Riley, I'm surprised that Ben just didn't do that. Just you would think in terms of like direct spoof of match game, or is that a little too close to the source material? Or like you could have done a Brett Summers even. Yeah, that's true. And it's funny because I think all of those guys blend together in some people's minds. Mm. Like what would be interesting is for someone to do Billy Crystal and to do Billy Crystal as the character from the TV show Soap, where he played a gay man. Mm. Like, it's a little meta because <laughs> you're doing a celebrity doing something else. But and you could make a probably a reference to that or something. But I don't know. Like, there, you bring up a good point. No, I hadn't thought about that. But who knows? Maybe in the future we'll get more queens to be adventuresome and bring to light previous celebrities that we just don't know that well you know <laughs> maybe one day we'll have an all alan alda you know impersonation <laughs> as you know from mash we'll see we'll see how that goes any other thoughts before we get into closing up good to close okay gentlemen start your engines and may the best woman win all right, Noah, as our extra special guest host, what is your closing thoughts on this episode? Or maybe My not on this episode? <laughs> <laughs> maybe not on this episode. Um, well, just the fact that season 10 has been announced as starting very end of March, which, what? Question mark. Um, I heard a little bit of a through the grapevine rumbling that it may be some sort of damage control that like I I don't know what but like towards the end of this season shit goes down and so their best strategy was like you know what we're just going to move right into next season not even like give people a chance to process I'll never know what hit them um so it'll be interesting to see if that's the case that's sort of the conspiracy theory board happening there and then in terms of my final thoughts on this episode because I'm realizing we didn't really talk about her at all is BB as Grace Jones I I have a lot of feelings about it. I was doing um, reviews for the first episode or two. And in the first episode, I described BB's boy confessional look as Grace Jones sent from the future to murder me. So yeah. I'm, a little, I'm a little bit psychic, I like to think. Um, but I just thought it was so interesting. And it made me look back. Have you, either of you seen the Pee Wee Herman Christmas special? I know I'm going off on a tangent. No. no. Well, do you know Pee Wee's Playhouse? Yes. yes. So the Pee Wee Christmas special had Cher, Grace Jones, Charo, Little Richard, and Oprah, all of whom have been great Snatch Game choices and or inspired whole challenges like with Oprah. And it just makes me think you could really take any celebrity from that special and they would be a good Snatch Game choice because it includes Katie Lang, Zsa Zsa Gabor, Whoopi Goldberg, Joan Rivers, and I mean Pee Wee himself. So just that was. <laughs> wow. I was just going to say Pee Wee Herman would be a fucking fantastic pick for Snatch Game. I'm it's saying. Wow. I, I don't know. That's very interesting. Yeah. The, the Grace Jones thing was. I don't know. There was something about it. And I was annoyed because BB was like. Well, I've never had to do it before. I've never had to personify somebody. And I was like, oh, whatever, girl. Like, just like, you know what this game is. Like, shut it up. And and then she gets out there and she did pretty decent. And that really fucking annoyed me because I was like, so are you catfishing us, bitch? Like, what is this about that that you're saying one thing, but then your delivery is not matching to your, you know, concern about lack of skill or whatever? Mm -hmm. I will say... I was surprised at her trying to take the lead in the race, like right out the beginning as Grace Jones in the game, when she was like, RuPaul, when are we going to fuck? And I was like, ooh. And then she puts her foot up on the, on the you know, the desktop and is like, you know, no man can resist this pussy. And I was like, jeez. Like, now, I, I don't know if she continued it the whole rest of the game at that level. It doesn't seem that, but from what we saw of it, yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. 
Um, I know we're moving on, but I just remembered something that I did want to say about Snatch Game. Um, and it was something that I kind of read from somebody else that had posted it. And I don't even remember where I saw this. But somebody had made the suggestion that why don't the queens ever uh, do somebody who is a character from somebody famous? Um, Ben did Maggie Smith from Downton Abbey. Uh, Bob the Drag Queen did... um, Uzo uh, Duba. Yeah. What's her name in... Crazy Eyes. Crazy Eye. From uh, Orange is the New Black. Why don't the drag queens do that more? They obviously did really well at it, so why, why not embody that? You would think you could do, like any of the Golden Girls, but as their Golden Girls character. As like, you could say Betty Girl White. Characters. Yeah. Like, you could do a great Estelle Getty. Oh, that's a uh, good idea, Noah. Estelle Getty. Do Estelle Getty. Yeah, well, I'm thinking about what I don't think there's Chester. much difference between Betty White being Betty White and Betty White being Rose Nyland. <laughs> They're the same person. They're <laughs> just, you know... Yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point that maybe the queens get too caught up on trying to be a celebrity and not a character. Right. And maybe that's the issue is that they think of Snatch Game as celebrity impersonation, not character improvisation, meaning you are a character that improvs in the moment as a specific thing. Which, I mean, you do really, you bring up a really good point that that could serve them better, maybe, if they pick the right character, so to speak. Yeah. I don't really have any cooldown ideas, except for um, what you are about to say. Well, I would like to know this as well. Um, and I am just really itching to find out what's going to happen to uh, Trixie, because she is still one of my top three picks for going to the end. And I have a feeling this really, really hurt her. Mm. I would like it to have not like really messed her up, but now we don't know. Um, going back for a moment before I say my closing thoughts. No, uh, your thing about like the online shitstorm is potentially, you know, that they're just going to roll one to the other. I thought someone had speculated in Facebook, I can't remember who it was, that they might literally overlap the finale and the beginning of the new season. Like, as like this ridiculous mega episode. Like, <laughs> like you have the finale and the crowning, <laughs> and then the beginning of the next hour is the, the season 10 opening, which I was like, why the fuck would you want to do that? Because then they're also showing Untucked on VH1, they're bringing it back to TV, and it's going to play right afterwards. So I'm like, I'm like, what is that? Like three hours of Drag Race? Not that I'm complaining, (laughs) but I don't know if everybody's ready for that much. I mean, talk about having a viewing party. You know, you might as well just, you know, hire a bartender and (laughs) put out airbeds because ain't nobody going home after that. Um, I don't know. It'll be curious to see how that plays. Um, My closing thought is, and the twist is when? (laughs) <laughs> because I I just want to know what the hell is going on with uh, Alaska and um... Chad. Chad, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <Are you> yeah, <laughs> games are so bad with me tonight. Oh gosh. Well, the, here's kind of the awkwardness. We've only sent four queens home. I say home with air quotes. So there's still, what, six to go. Mm. And one could say, actually, there's only, we've already reached halfway because there are rumors that a certain person isn't really who we think they are. Right. So if that's true, then actually we've already gotten down to half the competitors. But we don't know that. And I will say of all the the final moments, 
this was the poopiest. This, like, you know. Yeah, it was kind of boring. Like, Chi Chi's like, you know, and Rue's like, don't turn around. And then Chi Chi does this, like, open mouth blank stare, like, what? <laughs> and Rue's like, they never listen. And I'm like, <laughs> it was very, like, like, trope scary movie kind of horror thing you know like don't answer the door don't answer the phone don't go downstairs you know it was just kind of like mm, okay i'm not really sure and maybe if i watched handmaidens uh the handmaid's tale which i don't have access to because uh, i think it's on hbo or whatever like i would understand a little bit better as to what they're getting at but we shall see it was not as exciting or hysterical or funny i think as uh, some of the others so, yeah, Comedy I, icon, Chi Chi Devane. Uh, well, so actually, uh, before we get into our contact information for closing, Noah, you actually said something. You are the first person so far in our recap season that appears to understand and be playing the Fantasy League. I am. I am playing the Fantasy League. So uh, I didn't even try. And then interestingly, <laughs> uh, Damon said something. We were watching it streaming. He was like, oh, you don't get the commercial for the word. And I was like, the what? And he's like, yeah, when you watch it like through cable, I guess they have as part of, maybe it's a fantasy league or whatever, like there's a phrase and they tell you what it is. And then if you catch that during the show or something, and I guess it matters in the game, I was like, oh yeah, they don't do that at all in streaming. You don't get to see whatever that thing is. Hmm. Yeah, I um, in the bar where I watch, they do periodically, and it's phrases that it's exactly what you would guess. It's like, oh, reading is fundamental is the secret. It's the secret word. Everything back to Huey's Playhouse, um, and then you can enter for bonus points. And yeah, I've been playing. In the first two weeks, I was like, oh, I am just the most brilliant. I am doing great this week. And this week, I had Ben, so points there, Trixie, and then Kennedy. Because I was like, oh, Kennedy won her season. She's going to be great. And then the answer was nope. So I may have uh, taken a hit there. It's unfortunate. Yeah. So when you – so every single week you're picking of who's left, who you think the top two or top three are going to be? So everybody picked at the start of the season six people of oh. the ten that they could pull from each week. Okay. And then each week they pick three of those six that they think are going to do especially well. Gotcha. So I think my others are Shangela, um, Aja, someone else is there. Who knows? Maybe it's Kristen Chenoweth. Kristen Chenoweth, <laughs> right to the top three. She's going to win it. I feel nice. good about it. Well, we wish you the best of luck with the fantasy league that you continue to, you know, do well despite the hiccup this week with, you know, Trixie not performing mm -hmm. as expected. Um, in that case, but for anybody who would like to get in touch with us, uh, there's plenty of ways to do that. You can obviously go to cubsoutloud.com. You can send us an email to cubsoutloud at gmail.com. You can also give us a ring a ding and leave a voicemail message. Uh, we would play it during the show. That number is 361 C O L talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can find us pretty much on most of the social media places Facebook, Twitter, Google, and so on. Uh, Instagram is Cubs Out Loud, all one word. If you want to get into chatting with us, though, uh, on Telegram, which not everyone's up on this because even some friends of mine are like, what the hell is this thing you keep talking about? Telegram is a chat uh, messaging system. It's a lot like Facebook Messenger, but uh, I think it's way better. And so we have a COL Drag Race uh, chat group on there. So if you want to come join it, you could go to tinyurl.com slash telegram. And then the little dash symbol, uh, C-O-L-D-R. And you can come join us there. Uh, you could also obviously go to bearunderground.net to uh, tag the things that are C-O-L related. On iTunes, you can rate us. On Stitcher Radio, you can give us a thumbs up. Pretty much anywhere that you listen to the podcast or over on YouTube, you can uh, give us likes. We would greatly appreciate it. If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere on the internet as GareBear73. Uh, Chester, how about you? When they want to get in touch. You can find me on Tumblr or Twitter under the name The Pup Up There, or various bear dating sites across the net under the name Pup Shutter or Cupcake76. 
And extra special guest host Noah, if people want to reach out and touch you, I mean, they, you know, want to <laughs> chat or whatever. How would they do that? Well, you could come talk to me in the Telegram, so that's extra incentive. If you think I'm hilarious and brilliant, you come and talk to me in the Telegram for Cubs Out Loud. You come and do that. I am I am on Growler. Look up Noah somewhere in the New York area. I'm the one that looks like me. Um, I actually... Yeah. <laughs> I actually don't have a Tumblr. I'm slacking as a gay 22-year-old. I'm like the one that doesn't have a Tumblr. Um, so I am missing out. But um, I'm around. I'm around. You can find me. If, if you believe hard enough, you'll find me. <laughs> I feel like suddenly we're talking about Peter Pan and everybody needs to clap. <laughs> So they believe in Tinkerbell. Just fly away. Just fly away. <laughs> nice. All right. I'm well, going to come that... to New York City and steal that fan. Uh -oh. oh, look out. Speaking of snatching, someone's going to take your fan away. <laughs> uh, that said, we're wrapping up the show. We want to thank everyone for watching and listening. And uh, we're exiting yet again with the uh, all time favorite classic RuPaul song, Kitty Girl. <laughs> Hey, 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 kitty girl, it's your world. When you walk the streets, step into the beat. Hey, kitty girl, get your twirl in the disco heat. You're the boogie by the rocket queen. Yay. So now hey. we're in post show. Hey, I'm proud of the fact that I only drank half of my big ass, like, you know, a quarter gallon. <laughs> Is that the thing you were walking around with at NAB? No, no, no. I you gotta hydrate. Yeah, but the reality is it's about a half of a fifth of Jack Daniel's cider and uh, some other non alcohol stuff. So there you go. Oh, well, you're talking about carrying some jug, or you had a jug that you were thinking about carrying. And... Carrying your jugs. <laughs> <laughs> I always carry my jugs everywhere I go. <laughs> my jugs are now available on iTunes. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to stop recording. <laughs> <laughs>